This is the scary story about the accident. There was a man named Nicholas Miller who was 32 years old. One day he decided to go for a walk because it was so nice outside. As he was walking down the sidewalk enjoying himself, Nicholas decided to go get some food. He then had to cross the street to get to the store. So he started running across the street. But Nicholas did not see a car coming and the car then hit him, sending him airborne. Everything then went black for Nicholas. When Nicholas woke up, he was in a hospital room with technology that he never saw before. He then looked at his arms and hands and noticed that they were completely wrinkled and aged. Suddenly, a doctor came into the room looking very surprised. The doctor then said to Nicholas, Sir, it's a miracle that you woke up. You've been in a coma for 42 years. Nicholas's stomach then dropped as he realized that he missed out on his entire life and was now a 74-year-old old man. These are the most scariest phone numbers to call, part 2. Up first is 408-634-2806. This is the red room number, and whoever calls it is tracked down to their exact location and then be kidnapped and brought to the red room. Then you will be tortured or killed or even both. You being tortured will then be live streamed on the dark web. So unless you have being kidnapped and tortured on your bucket list, I do not recommend calling this number. The next number is 121-6333-1810. When you call this number, you will hear a mother and daughter arguing. But then as you keep listening, it gets very disturbing. You start to hear the daughter plea for her life and the mother screaming at her. The daughter is locked in a storage closet and then suddenly you hear screaming, scratching, and then gunshots. Calling this number is very disturbing and I do not recommend it. This is the scary story about the little white dog. There was an old woman who had no family living. Her only friend was a little white dog who went everywhere with her. The dog loved the fireplace in the winter and after the old woman went to bed, sometimes the dog would go lay down in front of the fire. The woman did not allow the dog in the bed, but sometimes when she was frightened, she would hang her hand off the side of the bed and let the little white dog lick it. One night the woman was reading a newspaper in her bed and read that a mental patient had wandered off from a nearby hospital and was a suspect in killing multiple people. The woman then turned off the lights and tried to go to sleep, but she was very frightened. She then reached her hand down to where the little white dog slept, and sure enough a warm tongue began to lick her hand. The woman then felt safe and comfortable again, and left her hand hanging there. She then turned to her side, and looked through the open door into her living room, and there in front of the fireplace, was her little white dog, gazing at the fire and wagging its tail. And down beside the bed, something was still licking her hand. These are the most scariest websites to visit, part 1. Up first is planecrashinfo.com. This website has people's final moments before a plane crash. It has MP3 transcriptions of passengers screaming and panicking. Moments before their plane crashes. This website is very creepy and disturbing. Next is deathdate.info. This website tells you when you will die. So unless you know when you want to die or if you're just curious, then I don't recommend visiting this website. Finally, this website is called worldsbirthsanddeaths.com. This website shows you just how little our lives mean in the bigger picture. You can see births and deaths around the world in real time with green and red dots constantly blinking. This website makes you face the fact that everybody is going to die. This is the creepy story about the wristbands. In Korea, when the patient is taken to a hospital, a white wristband is placed on their arm. It contains their information and name. And when a patient dies, a red wristband is placed on their arm. One night in a hospital in Korea, a doctor was working the night shift. He was on the fifth floor and pressed a button for the elevator. When the elevator arrived, he got in and there was one other person in there. He casually chatted with the woman while the elevator went down. The elevator stopped at the basement and the door opened. They saw an old man in a white gown standing there. The old man was about to get in when suddenly the doctor pressed the closed door button and the doors closed. Why did you do that? asked the woman. I did a lot of operations, said the doctor. I've seen a lot of patients die. And when they do, they get a red wristband on their arm. The woman was silent. You saw it, didn't you, said the doctor? That old man had a red wristband on his arm. A red wristband, said the woman as she raised her arm. You mean like this one? This is the scary story about a young boy who knew the truth about his mother's disappearance. In 1993, a woman named Bonnie Haim suddenly disappeared out of nowhere. Nobody knew what happened to her and had no clue where she could be. Except for her three-year-old son, who claimed that his father and her husband killed her. Of course, nobody believed him at the time, 
mainly because he was three years old and had no evidence. Fast forward 20 years, Aaron Frazier, who was a three-year-old son who claimed his father killed his mom, was renovating his childhood home when he dug up his mom's remains in the backyard. He then took his dad to court and won. His dad, Michael Haim, was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of his wife. This is the disturbing truth behind Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel's parents were very mean and stingy. Their parents decided that there wasn't enough food for the four of them, so they led Hansel and Gretel out into the forest to leave them there so they can die. Hansel and Gretel were terrified that they might be eaten by an animal, but they then spotted a house and went up to it and knocked on the front door. An old lady who lives there lets them in and warns them that her husband is a cannibal and if he finds them, he will eat them. When her husband came home, he immediately found Hansel and Gretel. He then beat his wife and made Hansel a slave and fed Gretel a lot of food so he could fatten up before the husband eats him. The next day, the husband left the house to go get something and told his wife to watch the kids. Right when the husband left, Hansel and Gretel slit the wife's throat, cut off her head, took some money and then got on their horse and took off. When the husband came back home, he saw his wife's severed head and no sign of the children. The husband looked for them but never found them. Hansel and Gretel then went back home and forgave their parents for leaving them in the woods to die. This is the scary story about the pizza. There were two friends named Jade and Carly who were hanging out one day watching TV. They both then got hungry and decided to order a pizza. They waited for about 20 minutes for the pizza to arrive and when it finally arrived, Jade answered the door. The pizza delivery man who was at the door was extremely creepy. He was smiling at Jade and giggling and then handed her the pizza and walked away. Carly and Jade then ate the pizza while watching TV. But about 30 minutes after they both finished the pizza, Carly told Jade that she did not feel good. Jade then said, what do you mean? But before Carly could reply, she collapsed to the floor. Jade then started to feel very weird also. And she then collapsed to the floor. Jade's mom then came in the room and saw Jade and Carly's body on the floor. She tried to help, but it was too late. They were dead. Jade's mom was about to call the police when she heard a voice behind her say, I just poisoned the girls with the pizza. Now put the phone down and come with me. This is the disturbing truth behind airplane liners that they do not want you to know. Airplane crash positions are meant to kill you. When you were boarding an airplane, you were given the safety video on what brace positions to take in case of a crash. People have came out to believe and prove that this position does not actually protect you, but instead kills you instantly. This came from a girl who worked with an airline, saying this position is meant to kill you. Also, when you're sitting like this, your neck is very, very vulnerable, and therefore any hard impact can immediately snap your neck. And not only would this position kill you, but it will keep your teeth safe so they can identify your body. It is said this is done because it costs the airline less money if the passengers die because they can't file a lawsuit. This is the creepy story about the new dog. There was a family who just got a new dog. It was a five-year-old German Shepherd that came from an abusive house. The daughter loved it and so did the mom and dad. For the first month, everything was perfect. But one night, the daughter was playing with the dog in the living room when her mom heard her screaming out of control. She then rushed downstairs and saw a terrible sight. Her daughter was being attacked by the dog. The dog was ripping her neck apart and there was blood everywhere. The mom screamed for the dad to come here and to bring a gun with him. When the husband got to the living room, he shot the dog dead, but it was too late. Their daughter laid in a pool of blood dead on the floor from the dog viciously ripping out her throat. This is how you could tell if your house is haunted. The first way to tell is if you have unexplained temperature changes in your house. When there is a ghost in your presence, the temperature usually drops from warm to cold. This is because ghosts require energy, which results in taking the heat from the environment. Next is if you have strange technological glitches. For example, you picking up a ringing phone only to hear silence on the other end, lights flickering on their own in your house, or your TV turning off on its own and changing channels on its own. Next is if you smell anything unusual. So if you smell something that smells like garbage, or something worse, and you don't know where it's coming from, then it most likely means that there is a ghost in your house. Finally is if your pets are making contact to the ghost, meaning if they gravitate towards a certain area of the house and continuously bark, or stare at nothing for a couple minutes, and then go back to whatever it was doing before. And the number one sign is if your dog is barking into a mirror. These are 
Your Scary Facts About North Korea, Part 4. Elections are held every five years in North Korea, but only one name appears on the ballot, and that name is Kim Jong-un. If the voter wishes to choose somebody else, they could cross out Kim Jong-un's name and write somebody else's, but everybody would know that you voted for somebody different because government officials watch you vote, and then something terrible could happen to you or your family. North Korea hires about 2,000 attractive women as part of a pleasure squad who provide entertainment and sexual services for the top officials. The year in North Korea is 109 and not 2020 because the country marks years from the birth of Kim Il-sung and not Jesus. This is extremely creepy and I feel bad that the citizens are that brainwashed. This is the disturbing truth about the Teletubbies. The Teletubbies is a dark nightmare about genetically engineered slave creatures being systematically trained to become part of our society. They are not in control of their own destiny. Three things control their day-to-day -day lives. First is the voice, a tiny female voice that tells them when to eat, when to sleep, and when to say goodbye. The robotic voice comes from a speaker in the ground, hinting that something larger lies beneath. Second is Nunu, a harmless vacuum cleaner robot who wanders after the Teletubbies, cleaning up their messes that they made and yelling at them for bad decisions. Nunu is the watchdog of the Teletubbies. Next is the pinwheel. When the pinwheel spins, the Teletubbies stop whatever they are doing and run to the top of the hill to perform a ritual. The Teletubbies just follow rules and listen to other beings. Teletubbies is simply a warning about the darkness of the human spirit as it ages. The Teletubbies is about the end of the world. This is the scary story about the drive-thru. One night, a kid named Kyle was hungry and he decided to go to McDonald's. There was a very long line at the drive-thru, but he decided to wait. When it was Kyle's turn to order, the person on the microphone sounded very irritated and was being super rude. Kyle then started getting angry and began yelling at the person. The person then said, Just wait until you get to my window. This creeped out Kyle, but he was ready for whatever. When Kyle pulled up to the window, the person he was arguing with was pointing a gun directly at his face. Kyle then sped forward, while the person fired countless shots at Kyle's car. Luckily, Kyle was not hit by any bullets. Other people waiting in line called the cops, and when they got there, they arrested the person who shot the gun. Ever since then, Kyle swore never to go through a drive through again. This is the disturbing truth behind Luca Magnata. Luca Magnata was a Canadian actor and model who was originally known for posting YouTube videos showing him torturing small kittens. On May 25th, 2012, an 11-minute video titled One Lunatic, One Ice Pick was uploaded to bestgore.com and it showed a naked man tied to a bed frame being repeatedly stabbed by an ice pick and a kitchen knife, then completely dismembered him. Luca used a knife and a fork to cut off the man's flesh and feed it to his dog. Luca Magnata then cut up this man's body. He then mailed his victims different body parts to political offices all around Canada. Luca Magnata was then being chased around the world on a worldwide manhunt. After about a couple weeks, they found Luca in a cafe in Berlin, Googling himself. They then arrested him, stopping this future serial killer from killing anybody again. This is the scary story about the road trip. There were two friends who were going on a road trip. Their names were Jeff and Tyler. Whenever they stopped, they always set up tents and slept in them. One night when they were setting up their tents, they heard a rustling noise nearby. They thought it was weird but assumed it was just an animal. That night, Jeff woke up to heavy breathing from outside his tent. He was very worried so he called Tyler's phone. He then heard Tyler's phone ring from outside of the tent. Jeff then told Tyler to stop messing around and come here. The tent zipper then opened slightly and Tyler peeked his head inside. Jeff then let out a terrifying scream. Tyler's head was decapitated and it was being held by somebody. Jeff then opened the tent and ran outside. But there was nothing outside. Only Tyler's decapitated head on the ground and his body nowhere in sight. To this day, Jeff had no idea what did that to his friend or who did that to his friend and why did they let him live. These are scary pictures that you have to look at twice, part 6. Up first is just a normal picture with a woman and her dog. That is until you look in the background. In the reflection of the door, you can see what appears to be a ghostly woman just standing there. And the only people that live in the house is her and her husband. Next is a picture of a man with some sort of mask on his head. But if you look behind him to the right, you can see a very creepy ghostly woman just standing there watching him with her neck crooked. 
The man immediately moved out after seeing this photo. Finally is a picture taken from an in-home security camera, and if you look straight ahead in the photo, you can see a ghost or something more sinister. After waking up the next morning and seeing this, the owners of the house immediately put it up for sale and moved somewhere else. This is the scary story about the cat. There was a woman who had a cat. She loved it so much, and it was her best friend and she had it for many years. But the woman always wondered why her cat cried every night when she left it alone. It's been like that ever since she got the cat. But the night after the woman's cat died, the woman was sleeping in her bed when she woke up to the feeling of somebody playing with her hair. She thought she was imagining things, but she continued to feel her hair being touched. Then the woman heard a rough raspy voice close to her ear whispering, Good kitty. The woman immediately moved out of the house and never got a cat again. This is a scary story about the apartment. One night, a girl named Emily invited her friends over to her apartment. There were five boys and six girls. They put on some music and began to have a good time. They were all enjoying themselves when suddenly they heard a very loud banging. They all then turned around and were astonished to see the figure of a man standing at the apartment window. It was freezing outside and the window was covered in frost, so they could only just make him out. His shadowy hand continued to pound on the glass and one of the boys then paused the music and shouted, What do you want? They then heard the man scream back, Keep it down in there, do you know what time it is? One of the boys then said screw that man and continued to play the music. Everybody then continued to have a good time and forgot about the man, except for Emily. She was shaking with fear and sitting in the corner alone. Her friends then came up to her and asked what was wrong. Emily then said, You guys realize that that man was at my window, but I live on the fourth floor. These are scary pictures that you have to look at twice, part 4. Up first is a picture of a girl just sitting in a park. But if you look behind her, your stomach will drop. Standing behind the girl looks like a man dressed as Slenderman, or it is the infamous Slenderman. Luckily the girl did not realize anybody was behind her until she looked at the photo later that night. Next up is a teenage girl who was taking a selfie on her computer. But standing right behind her, is a very creepy ghostly woman. The girl noticed the creepy woman immediately, but when she turned around, it was gone. Finally is a picture a man took one foggy morning after he heard very demonic screaming coming from outside. But the scariest part is, when he went outside, there was nothing there. He just took a photo of where the screaming was coming from, and when he later saw the photo, this is what he saw. This is a scary story about the car crash. There was a couple driving on a lonely road one night when suddenly they saw a car that crashed into a tree. The man then parked his car on the side of the road and told his wife to stay in the car. When he approached the car, he looked through the window and saw a man and woman covered in blood with their heads almost decapitated. He then looked in the back seat and saw a young girl who looked very scared. He then opened the door, picked her up, and took the young girl back to his car. He then put the girl in the back seat and started driving. He then told his wife that there was no survivors besides the young girl. But his wife did not answer him. He then turned to look at her and saw blood pouring down her chest. Her throat had been slit from ear to ear. The man then looked in the rearview mirror and saw the young girl smiling at him with a bloody knife in her hand. This is a scary story about the call. There was a girl named Sophia who was in elementary school. It was the end of lunch break, and she was sitting in her class talking to her friends, when her teacher came over to her with a pale, serious face. She said, Sophia, I have some bad news. Your mother was in an accident at work. Get your things and go to the principal's office. Sophia was shocked and didn't know what to think. She packed her bag and headed out the door. The principal was waiting for her in his office. He said, I just got off the phone with your father. He told me your mother was badly injured. He's rushing to the hospital and wants to pick you up on the way. You will wait outside and he will collect you. Now hurry along. But sir, Sophia said. No but, said the principal. Go outside and wait for him. But sir, I don't have a father, Sophia said. We're a single parent family. My dad died when I was a baby. The principal's jaw dropped. After that, her mother came to the school and complained, and she wasn't injured at all. The police were called and nobody was able to walk home. To this day, Sophia still wonders who the mystery man was who called, and what he planned to do with her once he managed to get his hands on her.